In this video, I'm going to be talking about modes and I'm going to go through a selection of modes and explain their uses. If I move along the range in front of me here, the first one we've got is a Proline mode uh, for chocolates. The second one we've got, once again, is a Proline mode, which is a magnetic sheet underneath, allowing a transfer to be placed in the bottom. The third one we've got, once again, is magnetic with a transfer sheet, which is a lollipop mode, which allows you to put the stick into the mode prior to filling it with chocolate. Right, if we look at the solid lollipop mode now, uh, we just insert the stick into the mode prior to filling it with the chocolate. Then we come to two of the hollow figure modes. We've got a smaller one, which is a figure of a little frog. This particular mode would only need one coating of cho chocolate. Then we come to a larger figure mode, which is a cocoa pod. Due to the size of this one, we probably need to give it, I would think, two layers of chocolate. Before we use them, we give them a good rubbing with cotton wool. By doing this, it gives you a good shine on the chocolate and it also helps the chocolate to release from the mould. What you mustn't do with the moulds is use any abrasive whatsoever when cleaning them. Any damage that you cause inside of the mould will come out onto the chocolate. So really that's a very important point. With all these moulds, apart from the two transfer moulds, we would always preheat them using a hot air gun. Just running the gun over the cavities. Just taking the chill out of them before you line them with the chocolate. Right, what I'm going to show you now is how to decorate, embellish the moulds prior to coating them with chocolate. There's going to be eight different techniques which I'm going to show you uh, using various items for decoration. As you can see on the table, I've covered it over with cling foam. There's a reason for that. These processes can be quite messy. Uh, and by putting this on the table, once you've done the job, you can just pull it away and you've got a nice clean table there. What I'd like to show you first of all is the, the cocoa butter that which we're going to use today for colouring the moulds. There's two types that you can use. Two types. We've got one pre-made, which is ready coloured. Cocoa butter with a fat soluble colouring in it. Then you come to the second type. Once again, it's a colour which is fat soluble. And you must remember that word, fat soluble. Uh, if you use any other colours, once it hits the cocoa butter, it will set. So it's important that you use the correct colour for it. There's a little snag about dissolving the colour in the cocoa butter. Some people will take the cocoa butter and just whisk the colour and you'll finish with lots of lumps in it. The best technique is to take a small amount of the colour and to that we're going to add melted cocoa butter. Once again, the cocoa butter hasn't been taken too high. We've taken it to around about 32 degrees C. If we took it higher, it would become untempered. We take a small amount of this butter now and then start forming a paste with the powder. And as you can see, we're getting a lovely colour there and it's, it's breaking down and mixing in to a nice smooth paste and then we can add a little more and there you go that's the coloured cocoa butter that we're going to use for one of the moulds today just going back to the the ready-made one as you can see it's quite solid into the microwave once again you're not going to leave it in there too long it needs to be taken up to 30 34
Let's start with the embellishing of the modes. As you can see, I've got Lem with me here to, uh, to give me a hand because uh, we've got quite a bit of work on to get all these eight modes uh, on display. The first mode I'm going to start with is going to be using the coloured butters. Now, if you can remember earlier, we looked at how to break the butters down into a nice coloured mass. I'm going to use a red one and I'm going to use a green one. And wearing a pair of latex gloves for this, we just take the butter and just move it round the mould. And notice I'm doing a, a quite a sharp, brisk movement. And that helps this, uh, this shining process that we're looking for by actually moving the, the, uh, the cocoa butter within the mould. So we're working all down the mould like that. And then we change fingers. And then we go with another colour. Once again working on the opposite side of the mould, working all the way down and moving it into the mould so we've got something looking like that. What we'd need to do with that now is allow it to set. So we'd need to put it in a cool area to allow the, the cocoa butter to set in the mould prior to then coating it in this case, with white chocolate. Once the coat is, you get quite a stunning effect. Another thing as well, if you start working cleverly with these colours, you can introduce flavourings which complement the colour. If it was a green type of cocoa butter, you could probably introduce a fruit puree based lime type of filling into it, which would then denote the actual colour. So that's our first one then, using cocoa butter. The next one, which probably, this is my favourite. For this, I'm going to use a bronze powder. I'll place it in a bowl. And then what I'm doing now, I'm taking a makeup brush, which does this job fantastic. Dip the brush into the powder. And then what we do then, we rub it into each of the cavities in the mould, making sure you get right, right into any intricate parts and moving it all the way around like so. Once you've completely coated all the moulds, tap off the excess and once again we take the moulds then and we're going to coat it in a dark coverture in this instance. So as you can see now, you get that bronzy effect. Another technique now <clears throat> is where we take a chocolate in a piping bag. Could you get me some plain chocolate, please, then? We're going to take some chocolate in a piping bag. Just nip the end off the piping bag so you've got a thin flow of chocolate. And then what we do this time, we take the chocolate and we just zigzag it, or some people refer to feathering it, over your mould. You can see the purpose now having the cling wrap on the table. Allow it to stand for half a minute. Then just take your scraper and just run it over the top just to remove the excess chocolate that's on the surface of your mould. You're going to allow that to set now and then we're going to fill that with a white chocolate and we finish it with something looking like like that. And I personally think when you start working with dark chocolate and white chocolate, it, it, it even brings out the shine even more. With this mode, I'm going to finish it with, uh, with an air gun. I'm using the ready-made cocoa butter. As you can see, it's in a liquid state, which I've softened down in the microwave. I've got the airbrush. 
which if you pull back, you can hear the jet of, of air coming out of it. Now, there's one thing you need to be aware of when you're working with one of these, is that this is quite cold. This is solid cocoa butter. Put the cocoa butter straight into that now, and it completely solidify through there, you're gonna get nothing out of it whatsoever. So there's two things you can do with this. One is, if you're working in a professional kitchen, you're probably gonna have a hot plate in there for keeping the plates. So you can screw that off and keep it in the hot plate, so it's gonna be at a, a warm temperature, so the butter's gonna flow, flow straight through it. The second thing is to go back to our little friend again. And just warm it up with a heat gun. Just going around the parts where you know you're going to have the flow of the cocoa butter. And don't get it too hot because uh, you probably burn your fingers then when you put it on afterwards. So now we take the cocoa butter and in it goes. and then we spray it into the mould. If you want to be really flash with this, once you've gone that way with green, you can turn it the opposite direction and then go with another colour. So you're going to finish it with a chocolate then that's partially coated in green, partially coated in, say, yellow. And there you go. It just gives the chocolate just a slight tinge of green colouring on the surface. Right, the, the next technique then is uh, you, you need a real expensive piece of equipment for this. Uh, we're going to use a brush, uh, used for nothing else, only chocolate work. And all we do with a brush, you could have a large brush like this, or if you want to do finer work, use a toothbrush. But you want one that's got some real coarse bristles on it. And all I'm going to do with this is just dip it into the chocolate and as I mentioned earlier, dark chocolate really stands out on white chocolate. And then just flick it onto your mould. Just pulling back the, the bristles of the brush. So you finish up with a mould that's got little speckles of dark on it. And once again, just scrape the excess off off the top, coat it with white chocolate, and then you get that effect. I'm going to be working with some dark chocolate here and a piece of cling wrap blend that I think there's some down there. Thank you. Cheers, thank you. Right, so I've just taken a bit of cling film for this, which I'm just going to just press together. This technique is good for moulds, but it's also effective if you're, if you're doing figures as well. I've got my tempered curvature. Dip the chocolate into the curvature, onto the table where you've already got the cling wrap, and you can see it's forming like a stencil effect on the table. Then all I'm doing now is just repeating that inside the mould. So you finish up with an effect like that. So once again, scrape off the excess off the top of the mould, coat it with white chocolate, and we finish up with that finish. Now I'm going to show you two different finishes using a piping technique. So what we're doing now, we're looking at the mould and we're going to embellish any parts of the mould that we could probably infill with chocolate. So on this mould, we've got a little button, as you could say, at the bottom of each pro line. So I'm working with a white tempered chocolate, which we're placing directly into a piping bag. And then I'm just going to pipe it
into each of the small indentations on the mould. So as you can see, we've put little buttons on each one. We're going to let that, once again, set off. Then we're going to fill the mould with dark chocolate and we finish it with that effect, a dark chocolate proline with a white button on each one. As you can see, with a few basic techniques, you can produce a stunning impact with your chocolates. The next stage of this video, I'm going to show you three different ways of filling your moulds with chocolate couverture. I'm going to be using the chocolate moulding machine for this, which is set at the moment at 32 degrees C with dark chocolate rotating round in it. The first mould I'm going to work with is the transfer magnetic mould. What we need to do is take the mould and just look at the machine where it's got the chocolate flowing out of it with the nozzle and we need to run the mould directly underneath the nozzle to catch the chocolate in the cavities. So starting at one end of the machine, I'm going to draw the mould under the flow of chocolate, fill in the cavity, running it along the centre mould, taking it away and then doing the, the outer side. Taking a scraper, I'm just going to scrape off the excess chocolate, bringing it over to a table and I've got a bit of a cloth there to act as a cushion. Just tap in the mould to bring any of the air bubbles to the surface. Then, using a spatula, I take the mould again now and I hold it over the chocolate, <laughs> tapping all the time, knocking out the excessive amounts of chocolate. Once we've done that, we now take the scraper, and we clean the mould. So you've got a clean surface on top of the mould in readiness for the filling. What you must be aware of when working with moulds like this is to get the, the coating as thin as possible the coating is there in the chocolate to hold that lovely filling that you've made. Throughout the process, it is quite important that you've got the chocolate at the right consistency and also that you knock enough chocolate out of it prior to filling. The next stage now is to set the mould. On the tray, I've got some plastic sheeting and all we do now is take the mould and turn it onto the plastic and drop it onto it. We then need to leave the tray then for approximately two hours at 15 degrees C for the chocolate to set in readiness for filling with the ganache. Right, the second technique I'm going to show you now is the lining of hollow moulds. Taking a white chocolate that has been tempered either through the microwave or seeded method. We take the hollow mould, we've embellished this once more with cocoa butter, a few dots there of dark coverture for the eyes. It's quite important how you hold the mould. We need to hold it with the thumb and the fingers underneath 
and get central of the mould. <clears throat> Taking a ladle of chocolate, we start from the top, working our way down. Fill in each cavity of the mould itself. Right to the top. Taking a scraper once more. Scrape the chocolate away. And then once again, using a cloth to cushion, we tap the mould, bringing all the air bubbles to the surface. Taking a spatula, turn the mould over. And once again, we're tapping all the chocolate out. of the mould. Finally, take the scraper again, a tray ready with a plastic sheet on, and on we go. Place it now in the refrigerator or a cool area until the chocolate is fully set. The third method of filling the moulds is using a piping bag with the chocolate already in. Some people might find this method a little easier to work with. Certainly it's the cleaner method of working. Fill the bag with chocolate, nip the bottom of the bag, and then starting at the top of the mould, we pipe the coverture making sure that we cover the stick. So working all the way up, just applying slight pressure, and each time I'm nipping. We're just gonna take a piece of fabric, tap them down to remove any air bubbles, and also to flatten the surface. And there you are, solid chocolate lollipops. Once you've filled the moulds, and then you need to cool them down, there are a few things you need to consider. The first being, you need to have them in an, in an area which is around about 15 degrees C. Ideally, it would be a good idea to have your own fridge. Uh, failing that, use somewhere cold like a wine cellar or something like that. If you have to share a fridge with other commodities in the kitchen, uh, there's a few golden rules really. One is keep it away from high risk foods. The other thing is to keep it away from foods that might taint the flavour such as onions etc. A way of doing this is to take the chocolate and put a metal plate over the top of it and place it in the fridge. Or even take the chocolate and put it into a plastic bag and not the bag. But you must remember when bringing out the chocolates out of the fridge, you must allow the plate to come back to the ambient room temperature. Right, now that the chocolates are fully set, we are ready for demolding them. Don't forget what we spoke about earlier in the video. Correct polishing of the moulds and the correct temperature, tempering of the chocolate will give you a good release and a good shine. First of all, let's look at the small olive moulds. And all we do with these, first of all, is put the fingers inside and releasing the chocolate from the actual mould. So once we know it's fully released, then we can just take the chocolates out. And as you can see, we've got a beautiful gloss. We've got the cocoa butter there, the, the green cocoa butter, and the mottling of the dark. For the lollipops, to remove these, we just literally take hold of the stick and lift them out. When we come to the pralines, once again, if they've been correctly tempered and the moulds have been prepared correctly, we should be able to just take the mould 
and drop them onto a tray. As you can see, sometimes you might have the odd proline that stays in the mold. And all you're gonna do with that to release it is just slightly tap the mold and out it comes. Now I'm gonna show you how to stick the figure molds together. Taking a tray and it's just standing over a bowl of warm water. We just take the mold or the figure, lightly soften it and then just sandwich them together. Like so. Now you've made the chocolates, you've got to think about correct storage conditions. There are four key points. One is temperature. Store between 12 and 18 degrees C. Second is keep away from direct light. Third is humidity, keeping a low humidity. And the fourth one is keep away from anything that's got strong odours or smells. If you're going to store your chocolates in a refrigerator, you need to ensure that they're in an airtight container. Upon removal from the refrigerator, you need to allow the chocolates to climatise to the outside conditions, otherwise you're going to get humidity. After all the hard work you've done, the last thing you want now is to spoil the chocolates.